Mr. Lee, and this is part two of creating a cookie cutter. In part one, we prepped the image files, and now in part two, what we're going to do is bring those image files in and extrude them and create an SDL file for 3D printing. What I'm going to do now is go up to my profile. When I click on it, it allows me to create a new design. And I'm going to do a 3D design. When it loads, you'll notice that you have a, a grid and you can go into settings and you can manipulate those settings. So I set my grid to be 12 by 12. Uh, the other thing that you can also do is do grid snap. I'm going to turn that off because it's going to allow me to move things around a little bit easier. First thing I'm going to do before I even bring any images in is I'm going to rename it. So Tinkercad likes to do these funky names. Uh, so I want you to name these the way uh, we've been doing it all, trimester. So I'm going to use my last name, first initial, class period, and then the name of the project that we're working on. So this is cookie cutter. And that way, you, when you download it, it'll have that the correct file name. All right, now I'm going to import two files that I've chosen. The first one I'm going to import is the, the, the image file that has all the information. So that, that's on my desktop. And that's this Sinol Shield logo. And you notice it's an SVG file. So I'm going to upload that. It gives you some options on how to upload it. This is going to be a huge image, so I'm going to scale it at 50%. I can change that scale size later. It also shows you the length and width. I think that's in points. So we'll do, let's do 75% uh, just to see what it looks like when it comes in. We can also change this later. If you hold the shift key when you drag the corner of the image, you can change the size of it. So you notice it's pretty big. So if I zoom out, I'm using the scroll wheel to zoom out. And I can zoom out in different portions of it. So this is big. So I'm going to click on it. And then the corner here, I want this to be about, I'm holding the shift key down too. I want it to be about six inches tall. So it's about, that's about right. And then we can kind of zoom in on it in different spots here. So if you click on it, I'm going to change the angle so you can see it a little better. This box tells you the height. So this one, I want to make I'm going to change this later, but for right now, let's make it like a half inch tall, so 0.5. And then I'm going to hit the tab key and, or enter, and that changed the height of it. Now, um, we're going to need a base to go underneath this. But before I do that, I want to import that other image. So I'm going to do import, choose a file, and now this one's going to be the the border, which is that file. So when I bring that in, I'm going to do it at 50%. You notice that when we did it at 75%, it was huge. So I'm going to hit import. And it's still bigger. It's still a really big file. So this right now, you notice it's about 8.5 by 7.5. I'm going to hold the shift key again and drag that corner in. And what I want to do is make that about the same size. And you'll, you'll have to kind of play around with it a little bit. But the other thing I have to do is kind of make it taller because that's going to be the part of my um, structure that actually cuts through the dough, the cookie dough. So right now the height of it is about an inch. Um, I, I think I'm going to leave it at... 0.75 inches. We'll try that. Now, we need a base. So if I fly around this, you can kind of see where there's a little bit of overlap. 
you can see that it if I shifted this over just a little bit uh, I could get it lined up a little bit better and that that's something you can kind of play around with before you save everything so if I take it see I can drag it drag it off and kind of move it around a little bit and I think I might shrink it down just a little bit more too so I'm holding the shift key to do that you know kind of fly around it that looks pretty good now we still need a base so I'm gonna use this rectangle tool and I'm just gonna drag it around you notice it's pretty tall I only want that to be will be like a quarter inch so 0.25 and then hit the enter key and if I zoom in from the top it's pretty big so I, I still got to do a little changing of my different parts here. And almost done. We're, we're really almost done with this now. Right? Remember, too, that once we get everything set up, we will be able to go into um, the 3D printing software and adjust some of the heights of the, of the scale of it. That looks pretty good. The only thing that I have a problem with, though, is that if I were to put this and flip it upside down, it'll be mirrored. So what I have to do is mirror this whole thing. Um, what we can do is just take this element, that's the, um, the image with the text, and if I go to the corner here, you notice that it's 6.015. If I change this to a negative 6.015, watch what it does. It flips it, right? So I don't want that one. So if I change this one to a negative 5.2, it'll mirror it. I do have to drag it back in, but that's kind of not too hard to do, right? So again, I'm going to kind of fly around it. I think I want this to be a little bit taller, this one. So I'm going to go up. I'm just going to drag it up a little bit, maybe to do it 0.8. And then I think I'll be ready to, to save it. And then we can 3D print it. Last thing you have to do before you um, download the file is you have to select all. So if you hit the control or command and the A key, that selects all the images. And we have three shapes. And then if I go up to this uh, group button, if you click that, that turns it into one um, 3D image. And you can tell it's done that because it changes the color of it. That looks pretty good. The one problem that we might have, this might be a little too thick, so it might kind of get be hard to push through the, the cookie dough, but, but that's something that you can change if you have to print it again. Last thing to do is you have to export it. And we're going to export it as an STL file. And then that gets downloaded. Then you can upload that to our file for 3D printing. Well, that's it for today. So have a nice day.